Good morning. It's day six here uh, for us on our Japan trip and we're leaving Sapporo today. We're both a little bit sad. We really enjoyed Sapporo. I think we'll definitely come back to Hokkaido, but we'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, this morning we have a bit of time before our training. Our train's at 1.30 and we're going to go check out a few more sites before we leave. Um, and then we have to find some food. We're going to find some food for the train down in Tokyo Station somewhere. And then check out and get a move on. So just looking out the window here one last time. There's the main entrance there to Sapporo Station. And then out here, this road here is the road on top of the underground pathway that we, we use a lot traveling down to Odori Park, which is like right across here. And yesterday when we were at the zoo and the shrine, that was over here. This is the mountain in that park. Really vast city. The fifth largest in Japan. I don't know if I really looked out this window very much, but it just keeps going. So we are going to get going, eh? You ready? I'm going to be so sad to leave this place, but onwards and upwards. Yep, on to the next. One of the things we didn't think we were going to have time to see, but we managed to fit it in this morning before we leave Sapporo, is the Sapporo Clock Tower. And the reason why we wanted to come check this out, other than the fact that it is a well-known Sapporo landmark, it's one of the few remaining buildings that were built during the late 1800s when the U.S. government was helping Japan sort of developed uh, Hokkaido and Sapporo. Uh, most of the buildings, I guess, have been torn down since and replaced with more modern buildings, but this one still remains. Um, so yeah, it's a really beautiful old building. On the front, over the doorway, you can see two red stars, which are reminiscent of the Sapporo red stars, which was the emblem for the organization that was put in place to um, develop Hokkaido. So that's kind of a neat relic. And the clock tower here actually was uh, the clock in the tower was made in Boston and brought over here and installed. So, very neat building, Nicole loves it. And we're just gonna take a walk around and then see if we can fit in one more site. One of the things I noticed on our first trip to Japan was that a lot of the manhole covers that you'll walk over are really intricately designed. And Sapporo has their own design. The one that you can find in Sapporo now was uh, designed in 1998. And it incorporates the cl Sapporo clock tower and a couple of salmon. And it's pretty neat. We found one that is in color at the clock tower so you can see the design a lot clearer. But uh, whenever you're walking around Japan, look down and take a look at the manhole covers. All right, so the last thing we're able to fit in today before we head out of Sapporo is this building behind me, which the locals have nicknamed the Red Brick Building. It was the original government office building here for uh, Hokkaido during the early development in the 1800s. And you can see it's very uh, US, it has a very US feel to it. Um, this is not the original building. It has gone through several phases. At one point, the dome was removed. Uh, at another point, they had a fire. But after the fire, they reconstructed the building and they brought back the dome and uh, this is how it looks. But we saw a picture of it um, from the original building and it does look very American. Uh, just like they plucked it right out of the US and brought it here. Uh, so really neat. Again, the five pointed red star, you can see it in the building. Um, and that again is from the commission, the Hokkaido commission that they set up in the early days. Uh, so we really need to see some history of the early, early days of Sapporo and Hokkaido.
So where do you think of our last couple of sites before we leave Sapporo? The um, first building we saw, the clock tower, was super, super cutesy. And this building is beautiful. And it actually reminds me of our build our parliament building back home in Toronto. The same mm -hmm. red color and same copper roof. Is that copper? Looks like it looks copper. Reminds me of home. Yeah. We're done our last little bit of sightseeing in Sapporo and we're just, we're gonna head back to the train station. We need to pick up a few things and then make our way uh, to the train and uh, on to our next destination. And I'm just standing here, the uh, red brick buildings behind me and the main drag coming out of the station is in front of me. And this is the road on top of the walkway we've been using uh, for the last few days. And also I know it was noticing that um, our hotel you can see our hotel from here. It's the building between the UC and the Mizuhu signs there. And I can see the building behind me from our hotel room up there. <laughs> so this is the main street coming out of the train station. Down that direction to Sapporo Station and down this direction to Odori Park. And you can see the glass boxes here are the, the sort of skylights that bring light down into the tunnel, into the walkway underneath. So I'm gonna go back in here and find the coal and we gotta make our way back. You're in food heaven? I'm in food heaven. I'm gonna get dumplings, I think. Uh, okay. been walking through the food hall down here at the bottom of one of these shopping complexes and I had forgotten how amazing they were. Uh, really really good fresh food and reasonably priced. Like get a good meal. We got a good amount of food here for $13. Um, we picked up some stuff for our train trip to our next destination and we are a bit behind now. We have to rush and get up to their hotel and check out. A great feature of this hotel is that you use your key card to also get up in the elevator. Uh, you just swipe your key card and it automatically chooses the floor. And that that's great because I always forget what floor we're on, <laughs> but this takes us straight to it. Then it's just a matter of figuring out what room we're in. Okay, we've checked out, so now we really have to leave the hotel. Seats are nice and big and comfortable. Um, get drink holders. You put your your classic beer in there. You have tray tables to eat on or work on. Um, yeah, really comfortable. Tray. Show them your footrest. <laughs> So we're just going to sit back and relax, uh, 
enjoy this trip. Just about an hour to our next destination. We're about five minutes into our journey and I'm getting a bit peckish. It's time to eat. What did you get today? I just got a little snack. I got um, tempura and tempura sushi. And when I was at the zoo, what I couldn't resist was a little souvenir. The packaging is adorable and I thought it was a good way to um, support the zoo. Um, let's give this milk a try. Let's hope it's not flavored. It's flavored. I think it is, I think it's more of a yogurt and it's sweet. I taste a bit of strawberries, which is strange because there's no indication, there's nothing pink here that would indicate that it's strawberry flavored. Do you like it? Or am I going to be drinking some yogurt? Actually, it's not bad. And that's saying a lot because I do not like yogurt drinks. Yeah, you hate this stuff. I usually hate this stuff, but I can't say no to the little polar bear face staring at me. Let's mm. move on to the shrimp. Look at the size of the sucker. Obviously not as good as when you go to a fancy restaurant, but for just train station food, it's pretty awesome. I decided to pick up a, like a, a rice bowl with a kind of cutlet on it. I'm not sure what kind of cutlet. Katsudon, maybe. So let's see. It's pretty heavy. There's a lot of food in there. Which is going to be a challenge because I also got a uh, shrimp mayo onigiri. We'll wait for the announcement. Announcement's done. Let's try this. That's pork. It's really good. Same with Nicole. It's cold, but it's still really, really good. Mine's not as crispy because it's got egg and sauce on top. But it's, it, it hits the spot. Like all this Japanese food just hits the spot. It's really good. Rice bowl's done. That was really, really good. I'm so, like, I'm so surprised how good it was considering it was cold. So I got two things left. I got my onigiri and I've got a daifuku. This is a bean, a big bean daifuku. And I think I'm gonna go with this because <clears throat> I'm pretty, pretty full. There was a lot of rice in that bowl, so I don't need more. So I'll save that for later. So let's see how you get into here. I think it's like a red bean filling. But it's dotted with actual big beans. Most would just have the um, the cream filling. 
That's good. We're almost there. Yeah, we're just about to get off at Nobori Betsu. Three minutes. No. Minus three minutes. We're three minutes late, believe oh, it or not. Here. We just made it on the bus, so this bus will take us to Nobori Betsu Onsen, which is about a 10 minute ride. I can't believe our train was late. This is a fun bus ride. Yeah, this is crazy. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. Are you excited? Yeah. We're on the bus already. I want to get off the bus. Oh. We found our ride. Takinoya. Here we come. We've arrived. We had arrived. Um, getting on the bus was quite a uh, journey. Very, very rocky. I don't. Just think a rush. Yeah. Right? yeah, it was just a rush, and I don't think there were any suspensions uh, in that bus. This is a very peaceful wild con. Yeah. I'm excited to explore it. after we've been shown into the lounge. Mm. And the Japanese sea. Okay. Hi. And this and name, matcha and yokan. Yokan, yes. Well, it was pretty customary for a, a nice ryokan to serve you a welcome drink. And it's usually matcha and some sort of Japanese sweet. And today we got exactly that. We got a bowl of matcha and the Japanese sweet, which I think she said was yogi. Yo yoga. Yogi or yoga. And what? a hot towel to refresh. So once we finish this, she'll take us up to our room and we'll start relaxing. All right, just wanted to give you a quick tour of the uh, Ryokan room that we're in here. So this is the main entrance to the room. It's, just, it's on a sliding door. When you first come in, there's an alcove. And it's down this hall is the washroom. Or I shouldn't say washroom. This is the toilet. And they give you a pair of slippers to wear in that room because you're not supposed to wear any slippers on the tatami. This is where it was all tatami mats. So you wear those slippers when you do your business. This is a closet which has the bedding, the futons. They'll make up our beds using all of this stuff. And then this is the main room. Some Rao, this is a bigger Rao Khan, they have quite a few rooms. So they serve dinner and breakfast down in a restaurant. Um, but uh, smaller Rao Khans will generally f uh, serve you your meal in your room. So you would sit at this table um, and uh, have, have your meal. And also in this room, there's another alcove. And there's a name for this alcove um, with a scroll and some sort of flower or plant. We'll have to look that up. 
I don't remember. And then another closet here. And then there's a sitting area. This one is um, has a sunken spot for your feet, so you can sit more Western style than the other table. And standard stuff, like there's a TV, DVD player underneath. Here's a um, Japanese tea set in this drawer. And a little fridge. Gla glasses in, in this one. Then we have the bathroom. It's a good sized bathroom in this one, two sinks. And this room has a private cedar bath. This is not onsen, it's just regular hot water. It's not um, spring water or mineral water. I'm sure we'll be filling that up and giving that a, a go at some point in the next couple days. And a washing station, very similar to what I showed you in Sapporo in the hotel and what you'll see later in the um, onsen itself we'll have a bunch of these stations so that's the tour of the room one of my favorite things about coming to Arayakan is looking and finding what goodies they give you in the washroom and this one um, we have the standard soap, hand soap, and bar soap. But they go a step further and they give you things like face wash, skin cream, and skin lotion. I guess that's a face lotion. For the men, they give you hair tonic, hair liquid, which we haven't figured out what the hair liquid is for, and the aftershave lotion. And then they have a goodie drawer. Let's see what's in here. This one's pretty standard. Toothbrush and toothpaste. Let's see what else. A comb and a brush. Q tip cotton pads. Shower cap. This is neat. Um, a razor and shower razor and shaving cream. And here. Hair tie and a headband. Pretty neat. All right, here's onsen etiquette 101. Maybe it's not quite 101, but. When you get into the uh, onsen room, um, you'll be wearing your yukata, hopefully. And hopefully you'll have tied it better than me. I just did this in a rush. There'll sometimes be lockers that you can use in the onsen. But normally, what you'll find in the onsen are baskets where you can put your stuff. And you put your towel here that you're gonna to use to dry off with, your clothes when you take them off. And you use your washing towel. There'll always be two types of towels at an onsen. There'll be the towel to dry yourself off with after you're done washing and on setting and washing again and then there's your modesty or and washing towel I think you could call it so you would use this thin towel to wash with and then some people use it to cover themselves you know hold it in front of yourself when you're getting in, in and out of the bath and if you take it into the bath I've seen people put it on their heads fold it up like that and just rest it on their head because you're not supposed to put anything but your body in the bath And you would wash off. So there'll usually be a washing station like this. There's two in this particular one. And you can see there's soap, shampoo, conditioner, that's shaving foam here beside the mirror. There'll be a handheld shower and a bucket, just like at the hotel I was showing you in Sapporo. And a stool you can sit on. And you just sit there and wash completely. 
and then once you're clean, you can enter into the onsen. And now nothing should go in the onsen other than you, your clean body. <laughs> so no towels or bathing suits or anything like that. Then once you're done onsening, you would shower and clean off again. Dry yourself with your, as best you can with your uh, washing towel. And then there'll be a room like this where the baskets usually are. You can grab your towel and dry off. And then there'll be a whole bunch of amenities here. This one has combs, brushes, What's this? Hair tonic. Hair lotion, I don't know what those things are. But various things, Q-tips, razors. There's a hair dryer. And you, you know, you clean up and do what you gotta do. And then you put back your yukata. And go back to your room. Okay, so we've come down for dinner at the Ryokan here into the restaurant and they give you a, your own private room and we're in a room and we're facing the Japanese garden which is really beautiful. There's actually snow on the ground which I was not expecting um, and uh, our first course is waiting for us which is great because we are starving and we're also very tired. I think we had a late night and early morning um, and then soaking in the hot, hot water we had went to the onsen earlier, probably did a sit. So we're going to enjoy our meal and probably go straight to bed after. They're probably up there right now making it uh, ready for us. So let's get started with our kaiseki meal. What is a kaiseki meal? Kaiseki meal is just a traditional sort of Japanese multi-course meal. Um, it's compared to like a Western style oak cuisine. And they bring out course after course. So we just have to get a moose bouche sitting in front of us. I'm not, I have no idea what anything is to even explain it properly, um, but I will show each course as we go. And if anything stands out, maybe we'll talk about it. But um, yeah, we just usually enjoy the meal and, and experiment and be a bit adventurous because sometimes the food can be a bit challenging. The soup is deceptively simple. It looks like it's just a clear broth, but when you drink it, the seafood flavor is just, um, it just really comes out at you and the mushroom, it's just a wonderful, wonderful soup. Nice and warm too. Mm. For our second course came, it is a sashimi dish. Um, there's a shrimp and some uh, tuna, some kind of white fish and some kind of clam or mussel, probably a clam. And what came with it is a bit of soy sauce and this, this stuff which we are not sure what it is. But she's the, she told us to um, dip our sashimi into it or dip it into the soy sauce. I think it's like a, it's like a foam, like a soy sauce foam and there might be little eggs in it. Yeah, I think there's little eggs in it. So yeah, I think it's just a like a fancy soy sauce dip. Foamed up. Interesting. Never seen that before. There might have been some survivors of the crab massacre at this Pearl beer hall. But don't worry, we're gonna finish them off tonight. It's always fun to have fire at the table. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. Right, our last dish before dessert has come and usually traditionally it's a rice dish so you get a bowl of rice and some pickles um, but this one came and she helped me make mine and she put some which looks like salmon along the top little pieces of salmon some wasabi some green onions and then and then poured a dashi soup into with the rice which I've never seen that before that's really unique um, and then a, a side bowl of pickles. So we're going to try this soup. Let me see what it's like. Mix up the wasabi a little bit.
Mm, very interesting. Is it salty? Sweet? No, it's, it's the soup has fishy. Yeah, definitely fishy. It's a dashi broth. Yeah, it tastes like dashi. Put the rice and the salmon with it. It's a very good combo. It's something that goes really well on a cold night like tonight over just a regular bowl of rice. Yeah, it's very good. All right, we just finished our Kaseki meal. Uh, we ended off with a dessert, which was not Nicole's cup of tea, so I got two. Um, it was like, a, I'm not sure how to explain it. There was some fruit, pieces of fruit, a couple of chestnuts, um, some pudding, like a creme caramel sort of pudding. It wasn't that, but it was sort of that. And then sort of in a glass filled in with apple juice of some sort and a bit of ice cream on top. I thought it was really good. Nicole wasn't a big fan. But overall, the meal was really enjoyable. It wasn't like over the top, which is kind of good because we were both exhausted and I must, wasn't super hungry. So we're just gonna go upstairs and gonna try and brush my teeth and get to bed. So we will see you tomorrow. Night. Wow, we looked exhausted at the end of that video. <laughs> we did. I don't think we did that meal justice at all. No, I think basically I just wanted to go up and go to bed. <laughs> But before we get into all of that, if you're actually still watching this video at this point, uh, thank you so much for watching the video. We really hope you're enjoying this series. And if you are, give this video a thumbs up, like it down below, and consider subscribing to the channel so you don't miss any future episodes as we put them out. But yeah, we were exhausted, eh? Yeah, we were. But we still managed to eat everything. Oh, we did. Except I didn't eat the dessert. You did not like the dessert, no. but uh, I was pretty happy but to the have But the other ten, co ten courses we polished off, even though we were so tired. Yeah. That Good job, us. Yeah, that was a crazy day. Filming on those days is always difficult. Going through that footage and putting that video together was a little bit frustrating because there were pieces that I would have liked to have had, but was just hard to capture as we're getting on and off the trains and on the buses and all that kind of stuff. It's kind of difficult when I've got two big bags and you've got one carry-on bag and you're trying to deal with the camera. So hopefully you liked that video. There was quite a bit of instruction in that video. It was. We showed a few things. Uh, hopefully that was informative to you. Did we actually explain what a real con is as opposed to a regular hotel? No, I don't think we did. We didn't really talk about Rio Cons that much. We mentioned them, um, and I think we kind of slightly inappropriately called this place a Rio Con. Uh, I think this place is more of a resort with a lot of Rio Cons type amenities, amenities and uh, stylings. Um, but yeah, we were Nobori Betsu was basically a onsen resort town, so they have a lot of hot springs there, and we'll see more of that in the next couple videos. Um, and so th there's a lot of hotels or uh, resorts like you saw that we were staying at uh, where people just come in mainly to have access to the onsens, the, the Japanese springs, the hot springs. So um, in the video you saw how amazing they were and the video doesn't do the, the onsen justice. No. It's so beautiful and also since it's a bath we only we didn't want to take too much footage because we didn't look like want to look like weirdos yeah the one that i showed you in this video was the small bath so there's two big baths at this resort we were staying at there's and you'll see the other one i think tomorrow i'm pretty sure i got footage of that one so this one was the small bath uh, and yeah there was no one there when i filmed luckily otherwise i would not have done that because i don't think that would have been looked upon too kindly so back to your question a real con so a real con is sort of like a bed and breakfast i think is the closest way to uh, call it from a Western point of view, except usually you also get dinner. So there they'll serve you breakfast and a dinner, uh, and you have a sort of more traditional style accommodations. You saw in this video the room with the tatami with the with the low table that I showed you, where I said normally you'd have dinner in a ryokan. In a smaller ryokan, they serve you dinner in your room, and you would sit at that table. Uh, at nighttime, they take that table, push it to the side, and they make out your bed uh, in a futon style. And I'm sure that will be shown in a future video. I don't know if we captured it from this place, but I know that we did film the bed 
uh, somewhere else. So yeah, that, that's sort of like how a real con works. And there's usually a hot springs or onsen or some kind of public bath um, associated with that. And uh, the meals are usually kaiseki. The dinners are usually a kaiseki meal like you saw in this video, multiple courses and really intricately presented and a lot of de attention to detail. And then dinner, I mean, breakfast is sort of just a set sort of meal you come down to or they serve to you. And it's not a multi-course ordeal. Um, I shouldn't call it an ordeal because it's actually an amazing no. experience. But breakfast is more, they, it's just set down. There are multiple dishes, but it's not a long process. So I think that kind of covers what a Ryokan is. Would you add anything to that? I would say that from our experience, the first few times we stayed at Ryokans, I think we were a bit um, shocked with the sticker price, I'd mm. say, because it does cost more. But once we learned that after a few experiences that what though you pay more, you get a lot in return. And um, the dinners are to start off are usually spectacular and if you were to go out and order the same deal in a restaurant, a restaurant it would be um, a, lot more, a yeah. lot more expensive and everything, um, all the amenities that they give you are just at your fingertips and usually at the smaller bio cons, uh, well actually most of the real cons you get your own person mm. so that's always been fun so we've always had um, a chance to get to know somebody um, not just you see them like briefly they usually are with you for your entire stay so you get a nicer a deeper mm. connection with the person that you yeah know, you see that's all the time. true I don't know if they're necessarily just devoted to you but you do have a person that will serve yeah. you breakfast and dinner they make your bed for you yeah, and, and they know your names and yeah, it's just really, really nice, nice to experience be... yeah so I think I think that's probably it. Just wanted to clarify a couple of things and uh, remind you guys to like and subscribe. Uh, there'll be some buttons coming soon, maybe here, maybe here. I don't on the next maybe screen. Here. Yeah. So we'll so please click that, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode.